What's up guys, Daryl from Smart Shooters. And today we are talking about my best, worst, and favorite gun purchases of 2021. I'm gonna show you guys what I think was the best gun I bought in 2021, uh, the best investment for my money. Uh, we're gonna talk about the worst gun. I've done a review on the worst gun and we're gonna talk about it today. And then we're gonna talk about my favorite build of 2021. I built a couple pistols and rifles. And so I'm gonna talk about my favorite one. Make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, and uh, let's lock in. Okay, so I wanna start this video off talking about what was my best purchase of 2021. What gun did I feel that was the best purchase? I was so glad I bought it. It was well worth the money. It had great value. It still got great value. Y'all ready? Best purchase of 2021, the Walther PDP. The Walther PDP, no magazine, firearm is clear. The Walther PDP has been the best bang for my buck all year. Now, it was close. I did test out the Canik uh, Mete SFX. Uh, for those who uh, didn't like my, why I sold my Canik videos, um, which I'm gonna link right here in case you wanna know why I sold all my Canics to switch to Glock. After that video, I went and got the Canik Mete SFX, which came with a ton of value, but I still prefer my Walther PDP. The Walther PDP to me, was the best gun I could have purchased in 2021. Between the super terrain serrations, that makes it super easy to press check, even if my hands were wet, came optics ready right out of the box. I love the texture. Can y'all see that? Love this texture, um, the ergonomics of how it fits in my hand. Then we got that performance duty trigger. There's the wall. Um, let's see if we can get that reset for y'all. Not a bad reset at all. This actually goes back and forth to my EDC. It battles my Glock 19 and my Glock 48. But this, this was all right with me this year. Um, I got about maybe 1,500 rounds through it. Uh, I, it's one of my favorite guns to take to the range. I do want to start playing with the sights. Uh, because it takes Glock sights, I do want to do some updating of the sights. Um, but it's got the ambidextrous, it's got the ambidextrous slide release, which I do like. Yeah, all in all, you can't beat the value of the Walder PDP. This is a phenomenal gun for a phenomenal price. Prices on them are starting to go up. Uh, but you can still find some around for like 570, 590. Uh, this is the four inch compact version. I am so happy that I bought the Walther PDP. Best gun that I purchased in 2021. Now let's talk about the worst gun I purchased in 2021. The worst gun isn't even here to show you guys cause I got rid of it the first chance I got. And that, was the Palmetto State Armory PSA Dagger. The PSA Dagger was the worst investment I made in 2021. Uh, I'm gonna throw in some footage of me shooting it. I think when I took it to my gun range, uh, the very first shot, you could hear me yell, ow, right after it, because my pinky got caught in the lip that's on the frame. And in between that and the magazine, there was like a little bitty gap right here on the PSA frame the, and the mag right here, there's a gap and my pinky just happened to fit right in that little gap. Painful, say the least. I'm finna show y'all that footage now. Put a couple shots through the dagger. This boy hurt. Not for me. 
The PSA dagger is supposed to be a Glock 19 Gen 3 clone. Um, I say supposed to be because the frame they did something totally different, which I mean, I, design wise, I liked it, but functionality, I didn't. Uh, the PSA taught me that you truly get what you pay for in the gun world. You might think that you got a gun that's super fire. Meanwhile, you got a limit. Um, you may think that you're getting the budget alternative to something, but Glocks aren't, especially Gen 3 Glocks are not that expensive anyway. I would definitely recommend spending an extra hundred something bucks getting the Glock 19 Gen 3 because that right there was not the way. The PSA dagger was a big letdown for me. Um, I was more than happy to get rid of that one. Um, the things I didn't like about it was recoil management was horrible. Like, I, I don't know why it was so snappy. Um, that didn't really make much sense to me, especially when most of everything was copied from Glocks. And Glocks are usually not that snappy. Um, PSA dagger was pretty snappy. I didn't like the texture on the frame. The texturing was a little too aggressive to me. Um, I know it, 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 for other people it could be different, but for me, it just did not work whatsoever. So not a fan of the PSA dagger. Uh, the only thing that was good about it was the price. I didn't care for the Magpul mag that it came with either. Uh, luckily it ran OEM Glock mags okay. It did have malfunctions and failures to feed with the Magpul and the OEM Glock Max. I was really surprised at the failures to feed. There were tons of malfunctions. And so the hard part about the PSA dagger is that Palmetto paid a bunch of influencers to like the gun. So when I did a review, uh, and I'll throw that up here at the end. Uh, when I did a review on the PSA dagger, uh, a lot of people said it was a breath of fresh air because everybody was promoting the PSA dagger like it was a viable option. And in reality, it was just a cheap ass alternative to it. It was like the dollar store. You ever see the dollar store colognes when it's like our alternative to polo? Like that was PSA's alternative to Glock. I was really, really, really disappointed. Last but not least, my favorite build. My favorite build of 2021 had to be, if you watch the channel, you guessed it. I call it the ARAK. It is my AR-15 chambered in 7.62 by 39. Um, this turned out to be a really, really dope rifle. Let's roll some footage of it right now. <laughs> now believe. Let's get it. Smart shooters. Smart shooters. Let's get it. How they do it? Damn, they knock my red dot off. <laughs> <laughs> That's seven six two by thirty nine, baby. I built that. I'm too hype about this gun. Now, before I continue, make sure I show you guys that everything is clear. Um, even the the AK style magazine hanging out the bottom of this is uh, it's just sweet. This to me was a lot of fun. I've been looking for something in 762, but if you know me or you follow the channel, you know, I'm not real big in the AKs. AKs to me, uh, they just had this, uh, I mean, for some people it's probably nostalgic, but the, just this old aura to it. Like, I'm not a big fan of AK-47s. Not, I'm really not a fan of Dracos. There are some AK-47 pistols I wanna give a try, but we'll see how that goes. This was a whole lot of fun to run. I ran it out on our Smart Shooters gun range in the snow. This was a ton of fun to shoot. Uh, real flash shooting. Not a lot of kick like an AK. Some AKs be having a whole lot of kick. And me and my guy was arguing about this because I hate all AK triggers. I have not found an AK trigger that I like, but I haven't shot anything Zestava yet, so. I got to hold out on my thing. I've only shot a uh, really, really old AK, so. <laughs> um, and I don't like anything from Century Arms. Century Arms, 
Uh, they're rocking it with Kanik, but everything else can, they can keep it. I'm gonna do a full review of this, talk about what, how I did the upper, the lower, um, why I chose 762 by 39 what red dot I run on here. Thought about throwing iron sights on here and I was like, eh, I don't think I'll be doing too much with it anyway. I just built this to go to the range and have something chambered in 762 by 39. That is this. So if I had to give an honorable mention uh, to something that could have been my favorite purchase, but it extremely let me down. That would be my truck gun, my Palmetto State Armory PA-15, chambered in 5.56. This gun let me down. Um, before that, I swore by my truck gun. Um, I was hyped when I bought my F-150 because when I got the F-150, I was like, now I got a truck for my truck gun. Before that, this was my Dodge Charger gun. Um, but my bolt sheared off uh, in the middle of somebody shooting it. We were all at the range. And if you know the Smart Shooters team, Nick was shooting this and the bolt actually sheared. Like it was crazy how the bolt just snapped like that. And had it not got caught on the carrier group by like that much, when it snapped, it would have went straight back in the Nick's face. So thank God that didn't happen. Um, I'm still working with Palmetto to try to resolve that issue. I don't know if I want to put a new bolt carrier group in here, um, not even worry about Palmetto parts, just put something that I know I can trust in here. Or if I just want to build something new all together and go ahead and uh, sandblast that Smart Shooters logo off of there and see what I can get for it. So of course, this firearm is clear. It doesn't even have a bolt carrier group in it or a magazine. Um, before that, this was amazing. I loved uh, putting this. I had put a uh, Palmetto Performance trigger in here. Uh, it was nice. I dropped the trigger pull to like two pounds. It was a whole lot of fun. And then that happened. And then it's been sitting ever since. I took I took all the nice stuff off of here. I took my sights off, took my trigger out. I took uh, <laughs> my handle off. I, I, I basically put it back stock. Uh, I'm about to take the Romeo 5 off. And uh, yeah, if I can't get a resolution to it. This before that happened was an amazing little buddy though. I enjoyed taking this everywhere. Um, I thought this was one of my best purchases. It showed me wrong, but um, it's not the first time I don't like something or having issues with something from Palmetto. So that's it y'all. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you share this video. And uh, next video, We'll do a review of this bad boy because why not? It's an AR, 762 by 39. Badass. Anyways, I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace.